Were you planning to start a family? Do you have any gut feelings if it's a boy or a girl? Will you find out the sex of the baby? Aren't you scared of being parents? It's such a big responsibility. Who do you think will be more strict? Hello, welcome back to, that was really awkward. <laughs> okay, hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I just finished recording a podcast we are going to be doing a pregnancy Q&A slash life update Q&A because we've had a lot of transitions going on in the last few months and we just wanted to kind of like sit down and I wanted to give Jamie a chance to weigh in because I just finished recording a podcast episode where I gave like my two cents and as I was recording it I was like a lot of this pertains to Jamie and I want him to be able to share his input as well because it's just as much his journey as it is mine. Okay. Were you planning to start a family? Yeah, we'd already discussed like wanting to have, what's that trying next year. So it just kind of happened like a little bit sooner than we we're expecting, but it wasn't like completely unexpected or something we had discussed before. It happened a lot sooner than we anticipated, but there was no sense of like, oh my gosh, what have we done or, or anything like that. It was just like, we were immediately on board with it and we were immediately excited and so were our families. Another person said, were you still psycho tracking when you got pregnant? Well, I wouldn't necessarily say that I was psycho tracking. I was in the process of trying to get like more data on my cycle by using an app called Flow. And I was also starting to use um, ovulation strips. I just wasn't doing it very well, but I was trying to learn more about it. And I still do believe that it can be effective for people if they're either planning for pregnancy or trying to not get pregnant. I have a lot of friends who are not on birth control and fully believe in cycle tracking. So I'm willing to like try it again, but I didn't really ever get to the point where I was like really confident with it. Okay, this one can be for you. What was the biggest emotion you felt when you found out? Uh, excitement, honestly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just really excited. That was definitely like a lot of kind of oh shit, because we like weren't in an apartment that was big enough. Like we weren't close to family. Like there's all these extra bits, but once I was like the overall feeling was excitement. And then obviously we worked a lot of those things out pretty quickly, so. Okay, how old are you? Did you always kind of think this time would, or sorry, did you always kind of think things would happen at this time? I'm 27, when the baby comes, I'll be 28. I'm 26, and when the baby comes, I will be 27, just. So for me, no, I feel like Jamie and I are similar in that we don't really like have timelines for anything so we weren't like by the time i'm this age this will have happened i had it like sort of an idea in my head that around the age of 30 whether that was like plus minus a couple years is when i would like probably start thinking about it but for me it was less about age and more about like stage of life and how i felt and i would say that for both of us within the last year financially our jobs our mental health and things like that have kind of become more stable and i think that's led to more conversations about like this phase of life whereas before it was like we were just focusing on other things yeah i think like for me personally when i was teaching skiing it just didn't really feel like something that was earning like enough income that i could you know support a family so i think once i got like a better paying job to be honest than like a full-time job it kind of freed up more time to think about like having a family and stuff mm -hmm. Another, I guess this is a good segue into a specific question for you that says, wasn't Jamie working on a mountain? What will he be doing in Ontario? Yeah, so I was working at Mountain and then last summer I did a web development course. And then this past January, I think, January or February, I got a job like a full-time job as a developer with a company that's based in Ontario, which is kind of nice and it's working remotely. So I was able to just move over here. And honestly, it's kind of better because now I'm on the same time as them. I might go back to working at a mountain in the future, like part time, but probably like a long way in the future. Right now I'm pretty happy where I'm at. Um, another question for you. Are you going to miss skiing in the Rockies now that you're living in Ontario? W were you ever skiing in the Rockies? No, they're the coastal mountains. Okay, well, the will, Rockies you miss are skiing, will you miss skiing BC mountains or Vancouver? Whistler, all that stuff, now that you're in Ontario. <laughs> yeah, of course. I mean, there's like no comparison. Whistler's like the largest ski resort in North America. You know? Living two hours away from that is always gonna be, like anything else is not gonna be the same. But skiing's skiing, like as long as I'm, you know, getting out on snow and it'll be nice to be close to family and like be able to honestly afford trips to places like that rather than just be living in an expensive place and not being able to go anywhere else like i found myself quite often 
not wanting to go to other mountains because Worcester was so close, whereas now I have like a reason to kind of explore other mountains more. No decision that we make is the right decision or is going to be without certain aspects that are going to be, you know, challenging or that we'll miss or whatever, but just weighing out different factors, we both kind of felt like we can make that transition work and I think for you with the mountains that was like the main thing, but I feel like you've kind of come to that yeah i'm definitely i'm sad to leave vancouver but it was just like never an option like we were never going to be able to afford a house in vancouver not right okay now. <laughs> okay not right now it's also like skiing is kind of my thing like you're not a massive skier no so i try like skiing is like a personal thing but i think when we found out we were having kids like i started thinking more in a family mindset and like what's best for like us as a family but it will still be important to find ways to have that outlet and you know it's a very important part of your life and so yeah like we've talked about if that's still really important to you we'll find a way to yeah. kind of continue what was your visa process getting settled in canada when i first came to canada i came on a temporary work visa because i worked at a camp i had applied for my two-year IEC international experience Canada visa and it actually didn't come through so I like had a car I was like ready to go out and like work in Vancouver Whistler and start my life in Canada but it actually never came through so I kind of I had to go home and then we obviously went traveling and stuff like that eventually it came through so then I was on my two-year visa and then we were living together from the time that we moved to Vancouver so I was able to do a common law visa which was way easier mm -hmm. I wouldn't say it was any less paperwork but that wasn't like I didn't have to get any points and I didn't have to take an English test okay question for me are you planning to continue with the podcast slash TikTok etc yes absolutely I think it will probably take on a different form as we like navigate the next chapter and we've had a lot of conversations about you know privacy for our future child and what we want that to look like and trying to be aligned on that and we're still kind of having that conversation like just trying to understand what we're comfortable with and i think probably when the time comes closer and when we're in the situation we'll know a bit better but generally like i don't feel like we want our child to be like the focal point of any of our or my content but for me personally i'm not opposed to like them being in it in some different ways but again not the focal point and not asking you know in the future for them to be like performing in any way or like forcing them into anything so that's kind of where we're at okay do you have any gut feelings if it's a boy or a girl yes i think it's a boy i had a dream like shortly after we found out that it was a boy and, and i've been having that. dreams for like two years like just random i'll just have a dream that i like give birth and it's a boy always i don't really think you can know because we're not planning on finding out yeah that was another question was like will you find out the sex of the baby we're not planning on it but we also don't really feel super strongly either way. I don't think we will. It's kind of exciting though, isn't it? It's like you don't know until, it's like Christmas. It's like a present. It's like you wild. Don't, you don't know until. Yeah, my mom, I'm one of four siblings and she didn't find out for any of them except no for my way. little brother. I didn't know that. Yeah, she found out with Ronan, but no one else. Wow. Okay. <laughs> How long have you been engaged? I think like just over a year. I assume, like I've got this question on different places, like when are you getting married? And my personal answer to that is like, don't know and or if ever. <laughs> no, I think we will, but it will probably, it won't be like a wedding. Okay, It'll but just be, like, out of curiosity, because I, I was actually saying this on my podcast, I was like, I don't know why we would, like I don't, I don't fully like connect with marriage as like a, as a thing construct and i don't like i don't have any strong feelings either way so i was like okay like i've started i've been starting to be like oh maybe we should get married and then i'm like but when i ask myself the question of why i don't have an answer so i'm like curious i would just be nice to call you my wife you can call me your wife <laughs> <laughs> but you're like not officially who cares i just like how long have you been engaged like five years there are a lot of people who are common law like we are who just like they say their husband and wife so we could Do just like really? transition into that okay sure at some point but you never know we may just like we talked about just like gathering both of our immediate families and just doing something small and then maybe like doing something small with jamie's family in england and mm -hmm. i think first priority is like get a house yeah we've got other things to yeah. think about at the moment. and neither of us are really like well okay I shouldn't speak on your behalf like I personally don't like the idea of having a big wedding and being the center of attention like that but maybe you feel I would way. love that really well I'd love being the center of attention like maybe but in not. a wedding context I wouldn't have a big wedding it would just be nice to have like 
all different friends and family in the same place. You know, I it's would, like one of the few times, if ever, that that gets to happen. I would do like party, but I wouldn't want to like, I wouldn't want to say a speech. I wouldn't want to no, say no, vows. No. I wouldn't want to like ask anybody else to do yeah, that. Yeah, I'd want to just do a party. Like. Even though I know some people love it and like I love weddings. I love going to them. I just don't want to be the center of attention like that in the sense of like walking down the aisle and everyone looking at me like I would just have a party. I mean, even like announcing that we were pregnant, I made Jamie do it too. Which um, is so funny because you like make content. Yeah, but it's <laughs> different. I don't have to like, I'm not in a room with anyone. So it's like, yeah, it's true. I'm alone. I think it would be extremely different if I had to do any of the things that I do online in public. I don't know, maybe not. I, I like like being the center of attention in some ways, but not in that way. I don't know why. Especially announcing you're pregnant, I just feel like I'm like, this is awkward. Okay, someone said, aren't you scared of being parents? It's such a big responsibility. No, I wouldn't say, I'm, I would say that I'm just excited. I, I think now that we have such a good support network around us, we're like, neither of us are really like, we don't really worry about a lot of things. We kind of just do stuff. <laughs> like when we found out, like we weren't worried about, oh, where are we gonna live? It was kind of just like, we made decisions and then decided to live somewhere. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I think not being, I also was talking about this on the podcast, like not being anxious and not being fearful, at least not in like a prominent way, doesn't mean that we don't appreciate that like it's more than likely will be challenging in different ways. But I kind of think like we're doing it anyways. We always knew we would do it. This is the situation that we're in. And like, it doesn't feel natural to be anxious. So I'm not gonna like, like conjure that experience by like overthinking it as of right now, like, I don't feel that at all. Yeah, honestly, I, right now, I kind of feel relief that the entire move is done. Yeah. And just the excitement. Well, like, that's I'm the not, other like, part is like, stuff. the majority of our energy as of right now has been the move and, you know, getting a car and car insurance and securing a mortgage and all that stuff. So maybe we'll feel differently. Maybe we'll check back in when, once we're like in the house and prepping stuff for the baby. But it, as of right now, it just doesn't feel natural to feel anxious like it just feels at the very worst i personally just feel neutral about the whole thing someone said what kind of a father will you be what i guess okay it's like, okay i should say i should say be? i really liked how my parents raised me like they never there's obviously like two sides to this but they never got like really angry or annoyed or like had a go at me for anything they were always very understanding and i think that's how i want to be i want to be supportive and understanding and not having the attitude of like i'm the father you're the child okay i'm gonna like project what i think you will be like as a father just based on like your personality okay okay so i feel like you'll be really like goofy and playful and fun you'll want to do a lot of stuff with them like provided that they're interested in like skiing and some of the things that you're interested in you really enjoy when other people like things that you like so i think an extension of you being your child like you'll be so excited to like teach them that yeah i will and i think you'll just be very like approachable jamie doesn't really have like a temper at all so i think you'll be just like level and easy going i don't see you being super strict i would say that would probably be more me <laughs> i would agree with that <laughs> but i don't want to be i don't want to be like a pushover or yeah pushover and i don't want all of the responsibility of like discipline to fall on you yeah and I think you'll be like so I think that's important to both of us that we've talked about is like balance in the household and I think you'll have like a really active role in like just their lives and like helping with things and being supportive and like yeah I we're a team we'll, like we're raising a child together which I will say like we have a very like balanced relationship in a lot of ways and a lot of the time like I feel the inclination to praise Jamie for it and while I am very grateful that we're balanced in a lot of ways because I know a lot of friends have talked about like they can't get their partner to support them in like certain household tasks or like whatever it may be I do think like it's important not to like necessarily feel the need to praise no it shouldn't be praised it. it's like because it's like yeah we have a balance like here I am being like I think you'll be really involved and as though that's like something to be rewarded for you know what I mean I just see a lot of women not necessarily in my personal life but like online and stuff talking about how exhausting it is to basically carry the load from a childcare perspective and not feel appreciated in that and like not feel like that's balanced and like I'll only speak for myself that that would be really really important to have 
a good example for our kids whether they're boy or girl or whatever that they are seeing like a balance yeah i feel like women carry all of the physical load like you're carrying the child and, oh, and all like... that stuff and then like to also have the emotional load is like that's just completely unfair you don't want to be doing all the things in your household and then also be like a project manager and like in yeah. charge of all the scheduling and planning everything for me that does require a bit of like relinquishing control though because i can <laughs> like my friends and i were joking about this where it's like yeah i want my partner to take on more of an active role in like planning things but then they plan things and like i don't like it <laughs> so we'll definitely like that's Part of my journey is like you just get so used to doing everything and then like it's not really building that balance from my end but that what was the original question i have no oh um what type of parent do you what think type of, yeah okay so be. what type of parent do you think i'll be i think you'll just be like really supportive and encouraging to do like i don't think you'll like give them any kind of lane like you kind of broke out of like the traditional like you went to university and all that kind of stuff and you went out and did your own thing that obviously really benefited you and i think you'll encourage them to do the same like i don't think mm -hmm. there'll be any kind of pressure and i think that would be really positive yeah and you're also just like really gentle and loving and kind who do you think will be more strict i think you will be more strict generally but i think i can be quite particular about certain things like you know what? what i mean i don't know there's just certain things that i am more this is such a ridiculous example but like sometimes when you leave the toothpaste cap off the toothpaste yeah but like certain things like things like that like smaller like really particular stuff yeah um yeah it's because you that's all you have to criticize that's about me <laughs> exactly exactly yeah okay so we're having a hard time wrapping up this <laughs> video we have both a hard time introing and outroing so we're just gonna leave it at that Hopefully you enjoyed Jamie's first like official feature in my channel and maybe there will be more. I love doing it. Yeah, I, I know. Can't wait to you love like being interviewed. It's nice because I know that I don't have to edit the video. Well, what are you talking about? <laughs> Shared editing? Yeah. That's... I would like to do like a like a preview though, like before the final cut. I kind of oh. want to have the final say like if there's any kind of I'm funny I'm gonna make quotes, really unflattering cut cuts for you. <laughs> but yeah, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. I'd love to hear your comments, any follow-up questions, maybe we'll do part two or any other questions you have for both of us. And thanks for the questions that you did have. And yeah, thanks guys. We will see you next time. Just make sure you like and subscribe. Yeah. <laughs>